Hello and welcome to the Shiny Bees Podcast, the podcast for those who like their knitting, comedy and yarn in equally large measures. I'm your host Jo Mulmine and this is episode 138, Can't Think of a Title. Hello, hello, and welcome into another episode of the Shiny Bees podcast. Today is Monday. I think it's Monday, the 23rd of March, 2020. And I am Jo, I'm your hostess, and I'm back with you again. Only a couple of days after the last one. I mean, can you believe it? Which is going to be awesome. I'm quite excited. In today's episode, I'm just going to have a bit more chit chat for you. I've got some knitting patterns uh, for you as well. And just answering a couple of questions that have come in from people since the last episode. So it's going to be quite chilled. The title of the episode is I Can't Think of a Title because I can't actually think of a title. Not really approached putting this episode together in the way that I normally would. But I think that's okay. I think that's okay at the moment. And I'm going to roll with that because I can, basically. That is something I can roll with. So I want to say a big hello to any... Returning listeners are back. If you haven't been listening for a while, I'm glad to be back with you. And if there's any of your friends that normally listened or used to listen and haven't listened because there's been a bit of a gap in programming, please do let them know that the podcast is back with you. I'm back with you, trying to make you laugh, basically. During the current times, entertain you a little bit and all of that good stuff. And if you are new to podcasts and new to this podcast in particular, thank you for listening. There's quite a big range of back episodes that you go listen to with a little bit more educational (laughs) and uh, organized content and some of them are just random to be honest and the feedback I've had was from the last day or so and obviously they are the hardcore listeners who listen as soon as something comes out is they want some some random chit chat basically they want to be made to laugh and they don't want to hear much about viruses now I'll do my best on the virus front for sure uh, to not kick the arse out of that one, shall we say. I do have some some knitting patterns related to that for you today, some of which are more serious than others, for sure. But I thought, you know, this podcast has been going for a long time now. It's been going since 2012, so like nearly eight years, and July will be eight years on and off, sometimes more off than on and sometimes more on than off. And the thing that really strikes me about the podcast is... People will come up to me now, literally years later, and will say something about something that's happened in the podcast to me, and I'll have completely forgotten that that thing has happened. Like, I will have blanked it from my memory completely, usually because it's some funny story about how my kids have tried to, like, self-destruct and everything else. So, I forget. But then people remind me, and I'm like, actually, that is... There's quite a bit of personal history in there as well. And it isn't the Jojo Joe show by any stretch, but all of the stories I've ever shared on the podcast have been with the sole purpose of making people laugh and uh, and having a bit of a giggle at myself, really. And it's just cool that that stuff can come back round again. So I'm not going to completely purge anything related to current affairs from the podcast. I'll keep it minimal, of course, but I will also just tell you some things about like what I'm thinking, what I'm doing in case they help any of you. And if they don't, sorry, if they make it worse, sorry. Um, but there's every chance that a lot of you are thinking the same things that I'm thinking. And, you know, sometimes it's good to know that you're not the only one screaming into the abyss, wondering why the hell people have decided to go and climb up Snowdon when they should be in the houses or indeed why people aren't buying Corona beer anymore because that isn't just an internet meme that's a real thing I saw it in Tesco's last week took a picture of it I mean I was more surprised that there was still some brew dog left on the shelf to be honest and a couple of crates of Desperados but there was a definite slide away from Corona the beer which is a bit harsh I think and it, it does kind of worry me that that there's clearly some thought process that goes between Corona the beer and Corona the virus and that people actually believe it. I mean, that's quite scary. But hey, hey, you know, night is queer as folk, as they say. So, yeah. Anyway, so I'm back again today. And I've got a few shout outs to do that have been piling up over the last few months. And if you want a shout out, then do send me a message. And I will obviously give you a shout out. 
So there's one to Maureen Dubari, who's Scottish. Hello, Maureen. And she is living in Joburg. And she sent me a message a few months ago, actually. And I've just got around to saying hi and thanks for the message, Maureen. And likewise, Jennifer O'Brien, who's listening from Australia. Hello, Jennifer. Thank you for your message as well. And like I say, if anyone else wants a shout out, then then give me give me a message and I will give you a shout out for sure. I am going to be trying to get a shout out tomorrow for my kids on the Joe Wicks PE teacher YouTube live stream. Like I reckon I can do it. I wonder, I'm, I'm trying to figure out if the key is to have a really strange name, to have a really strange location or whether just to time it so that you're at the top of the, the kind of comments when he gets to the break so that his brother can tell him. Um, if you don't know what I'm talking about, Joe Wicks, who's some proper London like wide boy, physical education type person is a PT. He's done some, you know, books, recipe books, whatnot. He's doing a PE list less than every day, Monday to Friday for all the kids. Um, and seeing as that's like half an hour of programming that I then don't have to provide, <laughs> I've jumped on that today and uh, got the kids involved in it. Sammy didn't want to get involved to start with. He's just like, no, it's too boring. This is not PE. And um, with some vigorous and incredibly theatrical encouragement from me while I'm making eggs and bacon and not joining in I might add um, to his sister and he he got involved so that that's I'm like oh we'll, we'll get a shout out tomorrow kids we'll we'll do it at nine o'clock and not at like 10 o'clock on the replay we'll we'll do it on time we'll try and get a shout out because shout outs make people excited right everyone loves a shout out I still love a shout out so yeah if you want a shout out from me a knitting shout out then then let me know and I'll let you know when I finally, I'm going to keep going. I'm, go, I'm going to keep going with Joe until I get my shout out for the kids, like for sure. Um, and just get more and more ridiculous on on the names or the locations to see see if I can kind of, you know, see how many I can get. Be good laugh. Good laugh. Anyway. Yeah. Speaking of that, um, I also had a message from a long time listener, Danielle, and she was just like, not being nosy or anything. I love it when people say that, like, don't mean to be nosy. It's like, I'm inviting you to ask me questions. You're not being nosy. You're just doing what I, I said you could do. Um, but she's lovely. She's been listening for years and years and years. And um, she was asking, what am I doing for school for my kids? Because obviously they, they don't go to school in the UK anymore. Um, they go to school in China, but that's been shut for months. So yeah, basically they already are part of like a homeschooling package anyway that provides accreditation um, for for the work and it's, it follows the English national curriculum anyway, but it's delivered by actual teaching staff. And the idea being that if you go away for a bit, because it's all aimed that you can... You can do it even if you're, you know, you're not even trained as a teacher and it's all planned already. You can just pick up the files, take them with you. And if you're away for quite a while, then, you know, you're covered. You don't need to worry about it. So I've got the elder one, the beast is doing that. And I'd be lying if I said I opened the books in the last week because I haven't. And um, Sanimal, his teacher is set in work week by week via a Google Drive, which I know a lot of other people. I mean, of, uh, there's a lot of listeners that don't have kids and I'm sorry for blaring on at you for something that's not relevant um but this was a question that is kind of relevant to me so I'm going to share it <laughs> and um yeah he's he's been set work and to download from the google drive so today we got some PE done so far and um a bit of tidying around the house and well you know I'm going to try and do as much stuff as I can but I'm basically if you want to know what I'm doing I'm just going to make sure they do the PE so they do the PE in the morning they do the cosmic yoga in the afternoon I'll put links to all this in the show notes and um Sammy will do his work and Izzy will do hers now if you're stuck there's loads of stuff on a platform called Twinkle uh, for, for the UK schools anyway, if you don't have anything at all, uh, the likelihood is, is that your school's dumped an absolute ton of stuff on you to be getting on with. And it's probably stressing you out a bit because you're trying to work from home or do the other stuff that you're supposed to be doing or, you know, trying to find some milk in the supermarket or whatever. And essentially, like, the way I'm looking at it is don't stress. What can you do? E nobody's at school. In the entire, not even the Chinese are really back at school yet. Like nobody is at school. So nobody's doing anything. Nobody is being officially educated in any capacity. So your kids are not going to be behind. And let's face it, the government have been filling their heads with shite like fronted adverbials for goodness knows how long. They don't even need to know. 
And then you've got people who you have to bulk buy pasta because they can't cook food because they've been too busy learning ridiculous bits of grammar or whatever else. Don't stress, like don't stress that the, the schooling is is way down on your list of priorities right now, or it should be, um, because you, this is not going to be short. It's going to be the long haul, and what you need to do is look after like your triangle of needs, and you know, food, shelter, stay healthy, keep your mind in good shape, and you know, do your work that you need to do to bring your money in if you've got to work from home, and then whatever you can do with the kids is a billy bonus, frankly. As long as you're keeping them alive and safe, you're winning right now. That, that, that's how it is. That's how I'm looking at it. And the learning laws are good stuff. Like we're cooking a lot of stuff. We always cook from scratch anyway. We cook a lot from scratch. But they're learning about that. They're learning about kind of portion sizes, about different vitamins. You know, because I'm like, no, you've got to eat your bananas. You only allow two wheat bakes. You've got to eat your bananas with the wheat bakes because you need all this potassium. You need this, you need that. Like the learning laws of other different stuff and like coping skills, life coping skills that you can't learn in school. You know, it's 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 things changing, and and to me, I'm like as long as they're happy and they're mentally fit and physically fit, and they're eating vitamins, good food. We'll read some books. We'll play some. I'm teaching them all the card games my granny taught me when I was a kid. Um, you know, we'll do we'll do a lot of that. We'll do a bit of work, but at the end of the day, everyone is going to be behind. And there's always going to be some some absolute chopper at school who's on the WhatsApp group giving it big about how they've done all the work already and how little Freddie's a genius. Well, crack on, love. No, I don't care. Don't care. Don't care what you're doing. Get rid of the WhatsApp groups. Get rid of anything that's bugging you. Get rid of social media. Anything that's bringing you down, get rid of it. Just clear the decks. You don't need that right now in your life. Just, you know, Listen to me, obviously, if, if I'm still entertaining you, if I'm not, bin me as well. You have full permission to bin me as well. But, you know, now, now is not the time for any of that as far as I'm concerned. So I'm just like taking it easy. I'm doing a bit of batch cooking when I cook every day to use up all my fresh ingredients. So I've got a freezer full of food um, in case I get ill and I'm staying the F away from everyone else so that I don't. Jobs are good, you know, just do the basics. So... Yeah, that's all we're doing is is that. And I'll try and build up every day to to get, you know, something else in and try and cover things. But for the most part, it's like, that's not my priority right now. Food, shelter, health priorities. Doing, you know, all the phonics, not, not so much. So yeah, all good. So that's what I'm doing, Danielle, basically. So I'm not not a lot, frankly, at the moment. I'm just prioritising the other stuff and then I'll get I'll get round to that. It's there. It's not going anywhere. The internet's not going anywhere. And um, there's plenty of stuff online to do. I have a list of resources from my friend who's a head teacher. I'll I'll bang that in the show notes with her permission. And I'll probably see if she'll come on and have a chat in case anyone is is a bit worried about it. And she can give you like her her view. She's dead sensible, dead normal. So she'll give you her view on on what to worry about and what not to basically and she's really good with stuff like managing children's emotions and all that kind of stuff because it's going to be confusing for them right so but what can we do we can only press on and get through it so yeah that's that and um i'm also looking for some ways to like host the community obviously i've got a group on facebook and I've been looking at something different for a while because I'm a bit out of love with Mark Zuckerberg and Facebook and I've got some concerns around like privacy issues and stuff. I don't, I just don't like the cut of their jib when it comes to monitoring what you're saying and doing. Um, so I've resumed that for some way of getting people together. I'm going to be doing some virtual knit nights, which I used to do way back in the, the Patreon days a few years ago. Uh, and they were really good fun. And that's like a cool way of, of people, you know, staying in touch without um, there being any risks and also not having to be in the, that, the negative maelstrom of the social media world because it, it's like the newspapers are just dead miserable and it's just like photos of people being idiots at the moment and it's just not a positive and good thing to fill your head with. So I want to find a way where we can all get together but we don't accidentally get sucked in to the the news feed and everything else which used to be po- possible with the facebook groups but it's not it's not so much now so you have to bear with me another couple of days till i can get to that because i am you know trying to keep on top of everything else that i've got going on 
he and I want to get the right solution so we can go in there and we can do all of the things and not have to see anything we don't want to see basically and try and minimize the anxiety inducing scroll which can totally happen you know it, social media makes you anxious at the best of times like they've proved it we don't need a ton of it right now as well so I'm also staying off social if I can as far as possible which is hard when you're an extrovert you know and you like people and you love being around people that's me like I suck the energy off people I love it I just love people and I'm locked in my house it's proper miserable I don't like it I'm quite good at keeping myself occupied. Hello, sissy. You all right? Yeah. I'm just recording a podcast. What do you want? Beautiful. Happy birthday. Who's that for? Natalie. For Natalie. Love it. Does that look like Natalie? It does. She's very... T- Her hair is perfect. Just like that. Is that is that you? Yeah. Love it. Tiny. Just have a look at your spelling of birthday, though, sweetheart. It's nearly right. I didn't fit in It's okay. I'm sure you can fit one in. All right. I'm still recording though. Speech in a bit. I'm not even going to edit that out. Like, that's life these days, isn't it? <laughs> See you later, Izzy. Bye. <laughs> um, forgot what I was talking about. Totally forgot what I was talking about. Yeah, the um, being miserable and having no one to talk to. Obviously, I've got my kids to talk to and they will interrupt me whenever they would like. But if, you, if you're used to being around people, you can... I find it quite depressing not being around people. And... Um, so yeah, it's as much to help me as anyone else to have some way of like chatting with people and seeing people and zooming with people and all of that kind of good stuff. So keep an eye out for that because that will be coming as well soon. So in terms of the nitty chat, I've had a few suggestions already for some DK patterns for jumpers. I've had a look on Ravelry, like I'm not finding much I'm liking. Some of it is quite tanny, it's like quite granny-ish. And some of it's just no, why would you knit something in DK weight yarn that's not for keeping you super warm? Surely that's for thinner yarn. And I'm just not not finding anything that I love particularly. So I need to keep looking there, to be honest, till I find something good. There's quite a lot of um, colour work patterns and stuff, but obviously I don't want a colour work pattern because I've got one a single colour of yarn. So I'm going to have to see what I can come up with. I'm, I'm finding a dearth of patterns, which is a bit disappointing but on my travels over the Ravelry pattern database I have come across some some patterns that might be useful and some patterns that you might feel to be fairly poor taste depending on your sense of humour I don't but some people will but I kind of get the feeling that you won't be listening to this anyway if you did if you were going to take it that seriously you probably chinned me off ages ago and I listened to something a little bit you know more fluffy So I've got a few pattern suggestions for you for today, for your knitting content for today, obviously. I've not done that much in in terms of knitting over the last couple of days. And I'm also in the middle of sorting my stash out. I need to send you a picture of my like office because it's it's an absolute tip. I was in the middle of doing a bit of a de-stash before I left for South Africa and there's just stuff everywhere at the moment. Yeah, so that doesn't, you know, all it does is serve to distract me further with all of the possibilities that I could possibly have and the beast keeps coming in and finding stuff and saying we knit me a jumper with this mummy so yeah anyway patterns for you so the first one I've got in my suggestions is lockdown it's by Robin Weldon of Studio Miranda and it's a free pattern and the aim of it is to learn brioche so I know there's a lot of like stuff out there, a lot of advertising out there at the moment, which in many respects is a little bit tone deaf. This isn't tone deaf at all, but there's a lot of like, learn a language, become a brain surgeon, you know, learn this. Now it's the perfect time to do this. And it's like, no, bugger off. Like, I ju- now it's the perfect time to just stay alive. Like, I don't feel the need to educate myself to death right now. Thank you very much for all the targeted advertising. I'm talking to you, Facebook. And um, this is not that. So, Dead Chilled is a free pattern to learn brioche. If you want to make a donation, you can. And she she suggests to donate to Trussell Trust in the UK, which is um, supports food banks in the UK or food for kids uh, in the US. So she's making it available for free. If you want to have a try at it, if you sat there and you, you know, you do fancy having a crack at something 
like brioche, if you've not had the time to do it before or now you feel like you want to do something like that, then that could be a really good option for you. I'll put links to all of these as well in the show notes, which will be at shinybees.com forward slash 138. Um, I'm not going to learn the brioche. I'm not going to lie to you. What I'm going to do is knit really simple patterns that don't involve any thinking. And I will have a pattern pick for that in an episode or two's time when I find some myself. I'm still on the DK sweater. I'm, I'm going to end up knitting a lush at this rate. Like I am going to end up just knitting a lush. I can see it coming, but what do you do if there's no patterns? Anyway, I will do a pattern pick of some black proper potato chip knitting patterns for you in the episodes coming up. So that was uh, Lockdown by Robin Weldon. The next one I've got is um, Don't Touch Your Face by Nicola uh, Susan. I can't read my own writing of Nicola Designs. Does anyone else find it? You can't read your own writing now. Like we've spent so long like, texting people. You can't write properly anymore. That is totally me. Um, so it's Nicola Susan of Nicola Designs. And it's a free pattern for a cowl. Right now, the, the cowl is not virus protection. I'm just going to make that clear right now. For those people who think it might be, it's not. Um, but it's basically part of a wider, it's hashtag solidarity um, by some German uh, designers and dyers who are also, you know, pulling together to support German food banks. They've been working on supporting the Australian wildfire efforts, but now... They, you know, Australia's finished burning down in an actual physical sense and now the entire world is burning down in a metaphorical sense. So they are supporting German food banks with that. So that is Don't Touch Your Face by Nicola Susan. Um, side note on that, obviously the food banks are going to be running low with stuff and the real junk food projects will be running low with stuff because all of the restaurants are going to be shut down. Mackey's is shut so that's I mean it's not the end of the world in Wigan yet because the pie shop's still open but when that shuts down Armageddon it, it is going to occur um, but obviously a lot of the the food that would normally come from supermarkets as excess or close to the best before date isn't there because people are buying it and the stuff that's um, excess from from uh, restaurants and stuff isn't necessarily there so if you can throw a couple of extra if tins or jars or packets or something into your shop if you're going out for a shop and whack them in the food bank trolley at your local supermarket we, I've already done that I, I put a lot of stuff in there the other day because I, I, it just annoys me that you know there's going to be people who are not who don't can't eat at the best of times and this is not the best of times so we need to be looking after the people who don't have the facilities to you know make tomato sauce from scratch from actual tomatoes and all that kind of stuff so that's one thing you can do that's quite easy is just drop a couple of things uh, if you can get hold of them obviously into the food bank trolley and that should help some people out because they are going to be short now a lot of the places they normally get it from they're not going to get it from anyway moving swiftly on COVID-19 coronavirus stuffy is a pattern by Randy Marchant. It's $3.60 and it's a pattern for an actual knitted version of the coronavirus, which some people have already expressed appears to be in poor taste. Um, and it depends on how you're looking at it, really. The thing is, is when, when, when stuff kicks off like this, people react in different ways. Some people, you know completely go into the shell some people get really organized some people cry some people get really anxious some people just take the mick in a really bad way you know people cope in completely different ways and um yeah this this stuffy is actually really and anatomically very accurate i'm quite impressed with the pattern and the the likeness between the knitted version and the actual virus itself um, so I, each to their own, I say, I think it's hilarious. I'm probably not going to knit one because it looks a bit fiddly. And I, as I've already said, I'm I'm all for the potato chip knitting right right now. Um, but, you know, some people will have a lot of fun with that. And she said her kids have had a lot of fun just throwing it around the house because they're all cooped up. So more the merrier, I say. So that is the COVID-19 coronavirus stuffy pattern. And interestingly, before she did this, Randy Marchant mostly did slug patterns for slug related things so I think she's one of those people that maybe is on the side of you know nobody really likes slugs and nobody really likes viruses Uh, maybe maybe that's what it is she's just out for the underdog I don't know but like I said really really smart like the way she's designed it and stuff is is quite impressive 
And another one for you, and again, this is raising money towards local food banks, is the Coronavirus Cloth by Ali Barrett, which is just a dishcloth pattern. It's $2.40 and it's basically like a a dishcloth square, but it's got a little virus in the middle of it. And she's also got one um, that says flatten the curve as well. So again, you know, people just being a bit creative. Some people move to being super creative when things are like this and... um, and there you go. That's what we've got. So there are your patterns for you. All the links and pictures for that will be in the show notes, which you'll find at shinybees.com forward slash 138 as usual. And as I said, I'm, I'm working on bringing you some more fun stuff. My research and inspiration time is quite limited and inspiration in general inside of my house is quite limited. I'm mostly just looking around and, and thinking, oh, I need to do that. I need to reseal around the bottom of the bathroom. That mirror is so dirty. Like I find, I'm find, i finding every single problem that is wrong with my house at the moment. So definitely let me know if that is you as well, where you just sat there noticing all of the stuff that needs fixing that you just don't normally have time to notice. Um, that's me. And also finding, finding coats that are aged three to four when your kid's seven. I'm like, how long have they been there? But now, obviously, it's the massive priority to... Beautiful. Love that, sis. Very nice. Massive priority to get that all sorted. Hello. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you. You probably just burst someone's eardrums with that. You, know, you, you know, don't get too close to the microphone. Not too close. Hello. No. Not, no, it's not funny. It's not funny. It's not funny. It's not. Anyway, clearly, it's not. Out. <laughs> Clearly, we've now reached the limit of patience for my children not having their eyes directly on me and for staying out of the recording room. So I'm going to call it a ta- call, call it a day for this episode. I will be back soon with more stuff for you. If you want to make sure you get every episode, though, please do go and subscribe on your podcatcher of choice, be that iTunes, Stitcher, Player FM, or whichever other podcatcher you like to use, Google Play, whatever. I'm on Spotify as well. Go subscribe so you'll get notified and you'll get your episode straight downloaded to your devices uh, as soon as it's available. But in the meantime, happy crafting. I hope you have a good week and I will speak to you very soon, I promise, small children permitting. Take care, wash hands, stay clean and speak to you all again soon. Cheers. You've been listening to the Shiny Bees podcast. Show notes for this episode can be found on the website at shinybees.com forward slash 138. And if you've enjoyed this episode, please consider leaving a review on iTunes or your podcatcher of choice. I feel a need to laugh again with you.